Hi y'all, Kraken Latte here. It's that time again where I bring you my tips, facts, or experience that you may or may not find helpful. All right, now it's time to talk to my dragon riders in Modern WoW. Thank you. <laughs> Our team remains committed to giving you meaningful game updates about every eight weeks with more content sprinkled in between. We really want Azeroth to feel alive and the home you want to come back to no matter how you play. Our next major update, Guardians of the Dream, is going live in just five days. I want to give a shout out to my elves. It is finally our time. <laughs> One week later, Season 3 will start with the last raid of the expansion, Amir Drasil, The Dream's Hope. There we will have our final showdown with Farak and defend our new world tree. But fear not, that's not the end of our time in the Dragon Isles. There's a lot more to come in Dragonflight that will serve as both the epilogue of this story and the bridge to our next one. Like I said earlier, we are evolving. We are changing our approach to this big, beautiful game and how we look ahead to new chapters. BlizzCon, Interesting. it's time for a new adventure, one that has grown from the very seeds of what captured our hearts when we first set foot in Azeroth. For veteran players, the last 20 years have led us to this. Uh -oh. And for those who have yet to join us, now is the time. And who better to talk about the first step in this journey? Oh, Chris, are we getting Chrissy? Mr. Max. Are we? <laughs> we, getting, we getting dad himself? Then someone who Daddy? The path in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> My friend and the executive creative director yep. of the Warcraft universe. Chris Metzen! Woo! Clap with me, Silver! Woo! Yeah! Woo! <laughs> Daddy Metz! Thank you for joining in, Colt. <laughs> 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 Appreciate that. Daddy Metz! Woo! So my voice cracks. <laughs> oh. Awesome. Glad to see him with the scene again. What up, BlizzCon? Woo! See, there's the hype. That's what everyone's here for. <laughs> oh, yeah. Horde, where you at? There's BlizzCon. Alliance! Yep. BlizzCon, as one! Nice. Holy smokes. Thank you. Thank you. It is, uh... He did get his beard. Thank you guys. Yeah. I know everybody woke up. It has I was been like, a whoa. Long, strange <laughs> trip to get back to this spot. I tell you that. It has been interesting this past year being back under the hood of World of Warcraft. It has reminded me of a few things. One, I love Warcraft. Number two, you know what? I really missed this work. Aww. And number three, on the real, it feels amazing to be back and part of this Blizzard family again. <laughs> Dad came home from buying milk. <laughs> Dad did come home from buying milk. As Holly said a milk bit ago, and cigs. next year, is the 20th anniversary of World of Warcraft. I can't even believe it. Whatever. How many of y'all <laughs> have been Whatever. playing from the beginning? Uh, that's funny. I love you. <laughs> well, if you're giggling so like a child. <laughs> Me too. This is what I came for. What was that? Doesn't matter. <laughs> We started thinking, so what next, right? What expansion hook? What single storyline could possibly match 
such a historic occasion. Yeah, because we're at almost 20. We I are 20 if you count Alpha and Beta. Well, I did. The good old days, right? And some of those early mythic ideas that kind of established the background of Warcraft. Started thinking about even some of the newer ideas that have played out more recently, Stretch. but still in a way, feel a little unresolved. There's a lot of that, a lot of and unresolution. In the mix of all that stuff, in the mix of all those ideas, particular things like, what the hell has Magni actually been babbling about all these years? <laughs> yeah. Was the thing that he came to warn us about in Battle for Azeroth Kevin, did it, did the it wounds. actually play out? No, it didn't. Or is there potentially something darker? Yes! Still looming. Okay, excuse horizon. me, I'll get excited. I don't know. <laughs> He's so coy. I love Will him. Will there eventually be an apocalyptic confrontation between the forces of the light and the void? Talk to me, BlizzCon. I'll tell you what, for nothing, my Pally Main, I'm all in on that kind of thing if it happens. Yeah, Pally Mains! <laughs> <laughs> you would be a Pally Main. Uh -huh. And really the big question for all the marbles, what have the Titans actually been doing since the dawn of civilization? Thank you, yes! <laughs> Speaking my lingo. What is the real purpose? Gotta put in my eyeballs. There we go. Cute little installations <laughs> slammed into the side of the planet. <laughs> Do we know everything we need to know nope. about their real intentions for our world? Nope. Just saying. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. BlizzCon. All of these hooks and a hundred more. That's uh, back eight. Game. Carry the two. A bunch <laughs> more. A bunch more. <laughs> All Accurate. in the pot. started to reveal a storyline. Something epic. How epic? Real epic. One might even say legendary. A storyline that in almost every way I'm sorry, I'm here. feels like the culmination of the first 20 years of our storytelling. A storyline provided we we do our jobs. We do the thing. Aww. That will vector us into the next 20 years of adventure. Yeah? Yeah? Uh-huh. BlizzCon. Are you with me, BlizzCon? <laughs> we call this storyline the World Soul Saga. Oh. oh, cool. Ooh, that's up my alley. Yeah. Give me the World Soul Saga. The World Soul Saga is so epic as we <laughs> It cannot be contained within any single expansion. No. Cool. It is built to play out over multiple expansions over the next few years. Yes. They're actually doing it. They said they would. Now. Yes. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Excuse me while I freak. Having said that, <laughs> we are working on multiple ways to deliver this adventure to you a little faster. Can it be a choose your own adventure? I mean, kinda. <laughs> Forgive me. Don't die. But keep your ears peeled. I assure you. Excuse me, will we I die? Are moving with purpose. I said don't die. And the last thing we really want is for y'all to have to have your grandkids controlling your mouse and your keyboard trying to wrap this thing up. <laughs> so, Accurate. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> also, given the scale of this monster, we have decided did to change it up today. Here we go. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Instead of just debuting your next expansion all on its lonesome, mm -hmm. we have decided to give you a glimpse 
at your next three. What? Whoa! Three? What? Three? What, three? Well, he said Saga. Does this meet with your approval? He did. He did say Saga. Yeah! Whoa! They're gonna tell us what the next three are? My friends, I'm gonna Man, what are they gonna have for, like, the next two BlizzCons? Ahead. I don't know. <laughs> Wait. Actually, I'm just kidding. They ain't mild. Buckle up. Excellent. Vexen my beer. Come? Yeah! Woo! They gave Metzen all this power. <laughs> no kidding! <laughs> See, he returned with God status. He ascended. The first part he did. Of the World Soul Saga. And your tenth expansion is called World of Warcraft. The war within. Oh, that sounds awesome. A little more volume, yeah, sure. Ooh, war In within. In this chapter, you will be descending into the heart of Azeroth Ooh. itself. Ooh, underground. <gasps> I said I wanted an underground kingdoms, one. And engaging with ancient cultures like the Earthen. I talked about this. I said I wanted this. Woo! Yes. We yeah, actually get to explore the Norubian. Yes! Norubian place. But I, the I gotta pee again! Yes! <laughs> you. Yeah, that's you. Yeah, yeah. We'll be called to do what you always do, which Murder is shit. dispense indiscriminate justice upon all those who got it coming. That's Absolutely! Fair. He's such a dad. He is. He's my dad. <laughs> He's my dad. That's my daddy right there. <laughs> the second part of the World Soul Saga oh. is called World of Warcraft. Midnight. Midnight. Whoa. Whoa. What does that even mean? In oh, look chapter, how pretty it is. You will be returning. Ready? To the old world. Oh? To the fabled lands oh? of Quel'Thalas. I turned up the stream. We'll turn it up all the way for you. It's 100%. There, the forces of the void it's me, have my invaded little Azeroth. <laughs> Wait. I'm sorry. Intent on snuffing out the light of the sun well and plunging the world into darkness and fear. Oh, cool. You will not only help reunify the scattered elven tribes of Azeroth, but you will make your stand with the forces of the light oh. and banish the shadow. Oh! Or will we? <laughs> what shadow? Of Midnight course, is amazing! Oh! Azkan, it is Azeroth. Things uh -huh. may not go to plan. Uh-oh. Things may just spiral wildly oh. out of control, mm -hmm. leading us to Mm -hmm. The third part of the World Soul Saga. Mm -hmm. World of Warcraft, the Ooh. last Titan. Oh, shit. Oh, what's going to happen? Oh, no. The last Titan? In this chapter, you will again oh, be returning to the old world. This time to the wintry lands of Northrend. Ooh. <laughs> and there at Ulduar. You will bear witness to the return of the Titans to Azeroth. <gasps> and maybe a certain old god? Well. And there, you will uncover a vast conspiracy. Oh. One that stretches throughout the history of the world. Oh. One that will challenge everything you think you know. Oh no. The Titans, their intentions, and the true nature of Azeroth. Oh. <laughs> Oh, this is why I don't do reactions. Time, I'm just making friend, noises. In time. Oh. And it's called Silithus. There you go. <laughs> ha ha, funny. Blizzcon, my hope, our dear hope, is that you can see when it comes to WoW's storytelling, we ain't screwing around. No! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> one, dude. All right. <laughs> We ah. are playing for all the marbles. <clears throat> we are working to establish a thundering heartbeat for this franchise. Yes, please. Now. Daddy. <laughs> <laughs>
See, he thought it was funny. <laughs> He's getting all emotional. Aw. Now, now, Bliska. Hearken to me. I'm hearkening, sir. I always wanted to say that. <laughs> I always wanted to say that. <laughs> Thank you. Whether you are a current player, and I'm going to bet that most of you are, <laughs> or maybe you jumped off the WoW train a few expansions ago, now is the time to come home. Come home to daddy! <laughs> now is the time to pull on your boots, pick up your broadsword or your favorite glowy Glow staff, staff, and get in this fight. Yes! Friends, Azeroth needs her defenders now more than ever. Now. In a few moments, <clears throat> we are going to give you a deeper look at the war within. But before we do that, I want to leave you with a little something to chew on. Uh -oh. I want to remind you all uh -oh. that sometimes very epic things can begin with small, heartfelt moments. Uh -huh. What you're about to see is one Kelthazad and Mr. Brigglesworth? Moments. <laughs> With that. BlizzCon. I need a Proud cigarette that was good. Defenders of Azeroth! <laughs> Let the World Soul Saga begin! Yes! I love cosmic shit. I'm into this. Okay, let's do it. <gasps> Boy looks older. Time will do that to you. <laughs> do it. Man doing indeed. He looks all skin and bones. You're here to tell me we don't get to hide. Is that it? You needed time. We stayed away. But time by itself heals nothing. You didn't just come here for me. It's the visions. You've seen them. I suspect many have lately. Something, someone is calling out from the heart of the world. Like a voice from a dream. <laughs> Something dark is coming, Anduin. The world needs your light again. My son. I am not that person anymore! I have no light. Not after what I've seen. Not after what I've done. You are not your past, Anduin. I trust you.
they're getting worse. Look, whatever's coming, I'll stand with you. Of course I will. But we were drawn here by the voice. Who is a throng? Who's calling out to us? I'm not sure yet. But that sword was aimed at someone. Okay, I had to mute myself because ah! ah! I'm not crying, I'm <laughs> crying. I was crying! I'm excited! I have to pee! I'm sweating! Uh, <laughs> Come on! I guess we're not ignoring that sword anymore. No! <laughs> I do ah! have to say though, uh, every time I see that cinematic and I've seen it many times, it gets me you know, right in my heart. That uh, that explains why whoever like it was said that it sword like earlier. <laughs> and we are so excited about where we are going. And now that you've seen or oh, heard crying. the overview for the World So Saga, let's talk about the war within. <sighs> As we all gather Does this mean we and get explore beneath 3D the surface, armor? <laughs> we'll find an ancient Peruvian <laughs> civilization. Yeah. They will be led by someone we were first introduced to in Legion. Oh. Zalataf, a oh. harbinger oh. of the Void. The Void brings destruction and darkness that threatens all light in our world. The last time we saw Zalataf, she promised we would meet again. Mm -hmm. And it turns out she was right. And while Anduin, Thrall, and others share the same visions emanating from the heart of the world, some are seeing something quite different. Uh oh. Oh. My visions are not the same as the others. No radiance, no song, just the shadow taunting me from below. Oh, I was going Oh. Isle of Dorn? Ooh! Oh, that's cool. Reading the depths. Oh, it sounds like an underwater song. Oh. Oh, oh. Look at it. It's so pretty. Oh, oh it's, it's so cool. It's Holy so crap. pretty. Whoa. Elf. Ooh. Cool. An allied race. Oh, more dwarves. <laughs> Dynamic flight. Yep. I told Wait, you. that was invincible. Yes. Oh, yes, it was. I'm <laughs> 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 ah, so excited. You have no idea. Oh, look how pretty this is. Oh, oh it's so the cool. The fate of our world rests upon the edge of a knife. Thank you, Lyria. Oh. And our battle. Nice deep. Can we get that? Can, can we get those customizations? Can, right? Can we, can we have those? We are get, apparently know. getting playable Earthen. Oh, so cool! In the war within, alongside beautiful, unique underground zones, we will have challenging dungeons and raids, and some new features too that are built to last. Thank you. If Thank you, you like exploring on your own with a couple of friends or family, we have Dells. These are a variety of bite-sized experiences for one to five players that will offer end-game rewards. Mm. You may also find in your delve a familiar character who would be willing to fight alongside Maggie? you. And if you're like me, and you have an obsession with alts, 
We have war bags. Wait. <laughs> uh -huh. What do you think I like, Holly? With this feature, you could treat all Please of your characters like family and share oh, banks, so good. reputations, trans oh! Yeah! Yeah! Did she just say I can't wait to the reputation? We're also introducing a new layer of customization for your class no specs idea. with hero talents. You might want to take your character down the path of a dark ranger, let's say, Ooh. or a far seer, Ooh. and more. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. <laughs> also, during your travels underground, you will meet the earthen dwarves, and you'll be able to unlock them as our new ally. Oh, more race. dwarves. Yes, I say. Oh, more dwarves. Cool. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love a dwarf? Uh, the facial hair options are spectacular. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's so much more to talk about, so please join the what, what Next panel that's coming up right after the own, opening ceremony right here. What I can tell you, though, is that the call to get into the fight to save our world will ring out when the War Within releases next year. Yes. Can't clap fast enough. <laughs> and lastly, I sincerely want to say, we are so excited to begin this new journey with you. And from our hearts to yours, thank you for bringing our world to life. Yay! <laughs> yes! You guys better be applauding. And applause. with his own note of thought, thanks. There you go. <laughs> Mike Get golf clubs. <laughs> yeah! Ah, oh, my arms are tired from Thank clapping. Thank you to all the teams who presented today. There really is <sighs> so much to look forward over the next two days. <sighs> and this is only the beginning. I can't wait to walk the halls of all of Anaheim with all of you. It is truly a joy to be here with the Blizzard team and our players. BlizzCon, be great to each other and enjoy the show. Woo! Yeah! That's what we came for. <laughs> oh, look at him. Look at him. Look at the end of it. No. My boy. Aww. He's so handsome. He is. He looks like he lost a lot of weight, too. Probably he's using the Yeah. Probably. Yes. Three expansions. Oh. Over. Only because I love hey, you. Hey, fans. Anyway. We're about to begin. Please take your seats. Oh, sweet. Thank you. Welcome back to BlizzCon hey. 2023. Over the next two days, there will be a series me, of me, eight me, panels switch. and presentations showcasing a variety of exciting new games and updates, led by some of Blizzard's amazing creators, artists, and designers. So. To kick it all off, here's our first Here presentation, World of Warcraft, What's Next? Here we go. What's next? What's happening? What's happening? Four years have passed since the mortal races gathered together in Anaheim, California. <laughs> and now, the drums of BlizzCon thunder once again. Let me hear the thunder! Yes! Ah. Oh, thank you. Thank you for being here with us today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the World of Warcraft What's Next panel. My name is Taryn Gregory, and as maybe you may have heard, <laughs> thank you. As, He's our cinematic as you may man. Have heard from Chris during the opening ceremonies, we are at the dawn of a new era of Warcraft. The World Soul Saga, a story that will play out over the next three expansions and will take us on an adventure in World of Warcraft like we've never experienced before. This saga kicks off with the War Within. In this first chapter, our heroes will be called on an expedition to the subterranean depths of Azeroth, revealing a new world full of mystery, wonder, and darkness. There we will confront the shadows below and face new challenges on the battlefield as well as in ourselves. So what is next? During this section, I'll share an overview of the story of the War Within, 
And then next you'll hear from the, uh, Maria Hamilton who will speak to zones and cultures. And then wrapping up with Morgan Day who will talk about dungeons, the raid, and our new systems. Let's dig in. In our cinematic reveal, did you guys uh, enjoy the cinematic? Mm -hmm. Good old man. Big one. shout out to the cinematic team for their work on that. It's just uh, incredible work. Um, uh, <laughs> we witnessed as Thrall found Anduin Rin, who has been wandering alone for the last few years, grappling, lost in his own thoughts, and dealing with the experience that he's been through, as many of you may have remembered. <laughs> Throughout this and our features trailer, we learned two very important developments, starting with these visions. Thrall spoke of a vision calling out from the heart of the world, like a voice from a dream. This radiant song will compel our heroes to investigate its origins, and while at the same time, a darkness has been gathering. Even as the heroes adventured on the Dragon Isles, and in the war within, the mysterious harbinger that Eridicron spoke of will reveal themselves. Zalatath has returned. Yes! Oh, she looks amazing. Freed long she ago really from the does. blade that once bound her, she is now the harbinger of a new era of the Void's dark machinations. And her message is clear. The Black Empire has fallen. The old gods are dead. And their ancient blood runs deep within the cracks of the world. We, the heroes of Azeroth, destroyed them. Nor did we. <laughs> The forces of the Horde and the Alliance have proven time and again they are among the most powerful armies that have ever stood. The Harbinger has watched this. She is patient. And while the Black Empire failed, Zalatath now seeks to set in motion the rise of a new dark legacy. Mm -hmm. One that knows our true strength and will seek to test it against a new threat of terrible power, the Nerubians of Ashkahet. Zalatath has conscripted the Nerubian queen Anserek, having offered her people a new future, one in which they will rise from their isolation as a mighty kingdom once again. And here in this sprawling city of Ashkahet, we will not find the undead soldiers of the Lich King that we faced before, but instead a new mighty stronghold of the Nerubians as they once were, Excellent. deadly survivors of the mythic wars that have played out time and again over thousands of years. In return for their loyalty, Zalatath has granted the Nerubians the means of a dark evolution. One that will turn the Nerubians into a new kind of ferocious and terrifying... Right? That's what I was saying, Lo, aren't I? will clash against, time and again, in the War Within. Now let's talk about who we'll be adventuring with. How do you like the key art? <laughs> <laughs> Several of Azeroth's greatest heroes will rise to the call of the Radiant Song and many will be faced with their own unique challenges. Anduin, having survived his deal or deal with domination. Oh, yes, he looks look so good. Oh. He really does. <laughs> look at my boy. Look at him. Anduin will be grappling with his relationship to the holy light that he no longer feels worthy of, while Thrall is seeking a connection to these visions, spreading across the world and working to find his new place in the Horde. While Magni Bronzebeard, long the speaker of Azeroth, will confront the heavy weight of that responsibility once and for all. <laughs> champion! <laughs> the wounds champion! Yes! yes! I love Terry, he's great. <laughs> but that brings us to, I know you saw this in the uh, features trailer, uh, Alaria Windrunner. <laughs> Alaria's journey will be central to the events of the themes of the War Within, as she, a Void Hunter, will use all of her prowess to hunt down the Harbinger while being torn between her own nature and the maddening call of the Void to which she is attuned. I'm curious to see Along if they'll the make me like her. I never a liked her. rivalry with Zalatath, whose twists and turns will come to define the nature of this new conflict. She's definitely course, got a new we'll look. Many more familiar faces on our journey, I'm, I'm kind of about it, host of new and even though it looks nothing like her. I know, that right? Maria is going to tell you more about in just a moment. But finally, this saga is only just beginning. Conceived to be... <laughs> yes! <laughs> Con 
conceived to be an epic worthy of the first 20 years of World of Warcraft, the World Soul Saga aims to redefine the storytelling in our expansion set and strike boldly at the core themes that define Warcraft. The might of heroes, the responsibility of that power, the pursuit of justice. Got to do my best Mets in there. Justice! <laughs> and the importance of finding common ground as well as ourselves amidst adversity. Up next, may I introduce Maria Hamilton, who will be sharing more about our zones and cultures in the war within. Thank you so much. Sweet. Zones and cultures, the shit I'm into. Oh yeah. Hello, BlizzCon. Wow, I am so excited to be here and delighted to represent our team and tell you about the places that we will explore and the cultures we will encounter in the war within. I can't really see all of you out there. I know there's a lot of you though, because I can hear you. And I hope to hear lots of oohs and ahs when you see some of this cool art I've got to show you. Sweet. So let's get started. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Thank you. <sighs> okay. As Taryn mentioned earlier, we'll be called by the Radiant Song, dreamlike visions that come from the heart of the Azeroth. This summons is going to lead us to the subcontinent of Kaz Algar, a place Ooh. long forgotten. It, it, <laughs> it's only through recent explorations in Oldemon that we've discovered a Watcher report concerning a contingent of earthen that was sent to this place long, long ago to investigate a fissure in the sector. What exactly that means, we don't really know, but we can probably speculate. So first, let's talk about the earthen. Sweet. Ooh, ah, there you go. <laughs> they do look, there you go. <laughs> they do look, they do look really, really cool. All right, we have met Titan-forged earthen before, of course, in Ulduar and other places. But this society of earthen has been isolated within Kaz Algar for oh, a the really little explorer. long time and have developed oh, their cute. own manners and That gives me, um... Oh, what's the movie? Now, visually, these earthen are a bit larger in stature, and they're noticeably Olympus. blinged out. No, not Olympus. They've got gems all over them, bedazzled, blinged out, Atlantis? you know, that kind of thing, right? Yes. <laughs> I was like, uh... they are guided by the... It gives me Atlantis vibes. Oh, it does, yeah. codified orders, duties, and expectations that provide instructions for the core functions of their society. You know, titans, order, all that, right? Yeah, yeah. But the Titans have been absent for eons, and the Ursin are no longer united in their adherence to these edicts. They now exist as three groups that are estranged from each other. The Oathsworn, as their name suggests, still uphold the edicts faithfully and believe everyone else is doing it wrong. Their charge is guard guarding the core way, a Titan passageway that leads right to the core of Azeroth. Ooh. They're primarily the city dwellers. They live conveniently near the object of their responsibility, that core way. Now the unbound, in contrast, have abandoned the edicts, and they are considered scandalously rebellious by the Oath Sworn. Their original responsibility was providing the materials to keep the Titan installations supplied. And they're primarily rural. They're living in and around the quarries and the mines where natural resources can be acquired. They rarely interact with the city dwellers. They feel neglected and ignored because they have a different opinion on how they should live. Now, the machine speakers have strayed from the edicts in practice, but not with respect to their overall obligation to keep the Titan works functioning. They've had extremely limited contact with the surface dwellers, and they express no little disdain for those who just don't understand the great machines. Their homes are built around vast industrial projects under the surface that allow them to perform their functions in accordance with edicts, more or less. These different perspectives among the Earthen and their variable adherence to the Titan's edicts has weakened the society as originally structured. And that's not good, of course, but a much more serious problem is their steadily dwindling numbers. For reasons that I'm not gonna get into here and now, new earthen can't exist until we help them out by doing some things and unite the earthen society once more. Happily, as a result of our actions, the earthen will eventually be unlocked as an allied race. Nice. Yeah, that's sweet, don't they? Yeah. 
Yo, oh, look at the hairstyles. These You're definitely cool, Ursin. but I mean, they just make me think of like dark iron dwarves. <laughs> yeah, that too. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's like, I think two of them that I'm really about is, is the second choice, one and then the first one on the but as you can see from line. the small sampling yeah. of combinations, there's some fantastic variations and customizations coming for the earthen models, including different gem incrustations, beards for all body types, rocky skin patterns, tones, and more. Now that golden mohawk with the braids and the fringe beard, that's, that's quite the look. But I really like the beardless guy with the bushy blonde uh, eyebrows. He looks so cool. He's just kind of like, yep, what do you want me to do? <laughs> that's that's so, the fabulous anyway, hair the humans right, have that on. he has. Yeah, I see that. Another cool culture that players will encounter oh, in the ooh, ooh, is the Arathi. Ooh, look at the armor. Yeah. The Arathi? Yeah, and you probably have questions, right? So these are descendants of the original Arathorian <gasps> Empire. And they've arrived relatively Dude. recently and through some oh, serious circumstances. The first set. Oh, oh find yes! They're trapped here within Khazalgar. Mysterious most oh, I love all of these. I, I unironically love all of these. But it's not like spooky mysterious. It's I need the other them. kind. Uh, as a people, the Arathi they're so good. They're 3D. They look 3D. They Please tell me they're 3D. They're bringing hope and hope light so. to the darkness. They're tough, resilient people with every member of the society being an able combatant. Some few are further blessed with paladin-like abilities through their devotion to the light. Even their airships are powered by sacred flames. Airships. Oh. airships. The extent to which they're comfortable in battle is probably a good thing because they have established a home away from home in an enormous cavern bordered by an endless underground sea from which terrifying creatures emerge to rampage and create havoc. Not my idea of a cool place to hang out, but they're really, really tough. <laughs> These watery monstrosities, though, are nothing compared to the threat from below. A constant swarm of Nerubians has been held back so far from invading the Rathi lands. The assault is unrelenting, the threat is dire, and the Rathi can't hold much longer. These bastions of light against the darkness are far from home and limited in number. Sure would be terrible if there was also division within the Arathi ranks. Just saying. <laughs> that would be pretty rough, what with them being so outnumbered. We could probably help them. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. All right, speaking of the Nerubians <gasps> in the war within. Oh, oh they look cool. Oh, look at them. Deep within oh. These ancient survivors of the Black Empire oh, I love that. rejected their former masters, have developed their own culture here in the Can deep darkness. Can we get darkness. that as the... Uh, as Taryn like, mentioned please, please. earlier, Zalatath oh, please. has made please. a bargain with the Nerubian please. queen That's an allied race, not a race kid. That is a, seeks a new yeah. future and renewed glory I for her it. people. The Nerubians are extremely capable and devious adversaries who have been honing their skills with their constant assault on the Arathi. But domination hasn't come fast enough for the queen's taste, as the Arathi has managed to hold against this onslaught. So this deal with the Harbinger has included some assistance for her troops. Through some dark alchemical process, Zalatath has provided the knowledge required to evolve chosen Nerubians into paragons of their race, enhancing their viciousness. And Queen Anserek has embraced these modifications with enthusiasm and eagerly offered her army to achieve the Harbinger schemes. It appears to be a win-win situation. But not all Nerubians share their sovereign's enthusiasm for change and her this embrace This is right up my alley, absolutely. You know Shadowy it. figures with far too many limbs maneuver against the Harbinger's plans in opposition to the Queen's desire. As you might expect, yes, any foray into this Nerubian kingdom introduces us to a variety of citizens, including some forms we've never encountered before. Here's a layout of some of the Nerubian models that are completed and also some that are in progress, as well as scale reference for goblins and humans, so you just get a sense of size. Can we, in addition to can the we get these in all the races? There are right. also domestic it feels, insects. Who serve it feels the like it's like gearing up for that. All right. pets. The team is hard at work building out the full range of carapaces, car carapi, I don't know, whichever, <laughs> skittering legs, <laughs> that was cute. grabby yeah. arms, piercing spiky bits, and creepy eyes for you to enjoy, so, I so, guess. So can I play? All right, play let's talk them? about our zones. <laughs> that that the sounds like a play as though. Right. is our first zone called oh, the so Isle pretty. of Dorne. This is the home of the earthen surface dwellers, as well as other native species of creatures. 
Oh. The fertile soil, flowering plant life, and generous waterways provide nourishment for animals in this untouched paradise. An important oh, facet so of Earthen pretty. society is cinder brew mead. This volatile substance oh, is it. manufactured from molten honey produced by enormous fiery bees. Whoa. Their home groves are a remarkable sight as the hearts of the trees themselves glow with lava-like fluid. Harvesting is always an exciting time as the ferocious creatures oh, are understandably so protective of their hives. Yeah, maybe right now the roosts at Storm too. Watch are wreathed with lightning and fierce winds. These wild elemental rooks may choose to serve a member of the Oath Sworn, who if so blessed becomes a storm rider, one of the guardian warriors of the earthen people. The Unbound deal with hostile creatures from time to time, but for their most part, the existence of, is fairly relatively peaceful, fairly sort of peaceful. Their comfortable homes are often situated near the places where they once labored as adherents to the edicts. Those sites oh, are now in disrepair, of that, and in uh, some cases, the lair of oh, shoot, other creatures. one city in Skyrim. Of course, the Isle of Dorne the boasts a great one, walled city where the Oathsworn shoot. live and serve Markar, the thank you. of the Titans. The city yes. of Dornagall is the location of many important civic buildings, markets, traders, and crafters. I loved Markarth. And it's here a house there. that a traveler will find the expected amenities it's of so a capital cool city. It's so cool looking. As well as <laughs> so the about it. causeway. It's amazing. The defense of which is the Oathsworn's primary charge. Now beneath the surface of the Isle of Dorn lies our second zone, Ooh. the Ringing Deeps. Ooh. As the name suggests, it is here Ooh. that the Earth are system? engaged in their work Ooh. in accordance with the edicts. <laughs> In these industrial areas of this cavernous space are huge, complicated machines. Oh, it's so pretty. Lava oh, heated wow. foundries and forges and waterworks, both oh, to cool and to power huge love. machinery. <laughs> Maintaining these Titan mechanisms and keeping everything running is both the responsibility the and the passion of the machine speakers. The Earth has shifted too in places, revealing openings to the Shut sky up, above money. to the Isle of Dorne. <laughs> These cenotes bring Look, light and water people. into areas once shrouded in Those darkness. Those little rat people! Abundant yeah, greenery, the, uh... flowers, and creatures oh, they got a new that model. do not typically dwell in caverns may be found Cobalt. in these idyllic yeah. spots. It was really important to us as developers that we deliver I love that. the fantasy I love that they got new of a hard-working mm -hmm. industry, but still had some breakup areas of natural beauty that don't mm. feel like dark, constrained tunnels. Now, as the machine speaker population has dropped, they've had increasing difficulties with cobalt incursions. And indeed, the cobalts have taken over the mines, the work areas. They've even built a city of it their It is own. like Moria. Unexpectedly, the cobalts are actually becoming a force to be reckoned with under the aggressive Moria actions of their leader, the Candle King. You knew it had to be a candle. The Candle King. The candle. No take candle. <laughs> no take candle. Oh, I love it. With oh. the passage of time, the earthen have diminished both in number and in the knowledge required to perform the various routines to tune and repair the processes. The old ways have been forgotten, and new creative methods must be employed if the edicts are be to, to be obeyed. Oh, so they're kind of making it up as they amazing. go along. From the ringing deeps, we descend further into Khazal Gar it's to reach so Hollow gorgeous. Fall, That's cool. a vast hollow area it's in so the pretty. Earth. Journey to the center of the Earth? endless underground like, sea. Whoa. You know, this tenuous foothold under the bright light of an enormous crystal has allowed oh. the Arathi to survive. Oh, that's where the Arathi are? Using airships to travel to high plateaus oh. and establish docks, light towers, Whoa. villages, and even a priory. That's huge. That's amazing. That's so From their capital of Meraldar. Can I live there? These trapped people the strive in the to keep hope alive yeah. and spread the light. Oh, wow. While engaged in a near constant battle with the Nerubians at their borders. This gives me like Diablo vibes. Oh, oh man. Space it's is like the everything. bright light and the greenery are intended to feel as though we're on the surface. Somehow, rather than in this sort of strange hollow within Azeroth. The crystal provides brilliant light, warmth, oh. and growth for vegetation. Shut up. You may That's notice so that all nice. the blooming plants have opened their blossoms toward the light and seem to be reaching in that direction whenever they're in Holofall. So cool. Unfortunately, the crystal sun has been changing in recent years. Uh oh. Where once the light was steady and reliable, it now fades without warning, <laughs> plunging the Arathi oh, into no. darkness, save where they have built light towers and maintained their holy flame beacons. In the absence of this light, the dangerous Cobis and other fierce creatures emerge from the sea to rampage. As the Arathi are barely holding back the Nerubians, these unpredictable episodes are incredibly demoralizing and deadly. Oh. Happily, the light has always returned to the crystal. So far. 
so far. And at the deepest <laughs> descent in the war within, dun, dun, dun. we reach the zone of Aj Kahet. That almost rhymes. Anyway, the Nerubian city of threads has been built on the ruins of itself over and over and over again. As areas decay and crumble, a new district is built upon its ruins, and as a result, the city climbs ever higher. Those Nerubians favored by the queen, or possessing enormous wealth, or both, command the greatest views and live in the highest places over these swarming masses of the many districts. This, uh, the burrows is the home of the scavengers. This feels the like Minzo Bear. The decay and the filth. Berzan from the Indy. Bazaar is a trading oh, nice. hub of it fine me of Black silks, Reach fascinating alchemical discoveries, and other exotic and hard to find goods. The skeins are the home of the lore keepers and scholars who toil to maintain the history of their people and research myths and legends of Azeroth. There are many other districts and less than savory oh, yeah. neighborhoods. Both the Underdark, well known and definitely. secret uh, that the careful adventurer oh, I love could it. discover it's so good. should they so risk cool. life and limb to do so. But the key to such exploration is fitting in among the Nerubians and being accepted, an enterprise both best accomplished through skill in the use of pheromones and considerable bravery. The zone of Aj Kahet features areas of spectacular dark beauty that are inhabited by these creatures that have found a way to live among the Nerubians without being de deemed a threat, found to be particularly tasty to consume, or just too much fun to torment. <laughs> the mobilization of forces to assault the Arathi while also providing military might to achieve Zalatath's schemes has stirred up all sorts of inhabitants of the darkness. This is going to be a cool playthrough, I agree. And deep within the city itself, oh, it's gonna be so the Nerudians are oh. gathering an odd substance. Oh, man. My body is ready. The black blood of the old gods. I'm so excited. For some unknown purpose. I'm so excited. Me too. But I'm sure that's fine. <laughs> and now I'd like to talk a little bit about our zone flow. As I mentioned... Awesome oh, it's gonna be massive. Uh-huh. Oh, dude. My computer's not gonna handle this. <laughs> no, you're gonna need a we new computer. From the Isle of Dor, <laughs> oh, no. Into the ringing deep, into the well, and then into Ashkahet. It's so pretty. In the war within, all of well, our zones I have are entire connected year all to together save up. using the airlock technology yeah. that we developed for Zerilek Cavern, allowing for this seamless descent from the Isle of Dorn all the way to Ashkahet. Oh. That was video I just captured last week of the transition between the ringing deeps and Hall of Fall. As you can oh. see, we built for dynamic flight, and we were able to flow directly between the zones without the load screen. Oh, there is I some seriously oh, amazing goodness. swoopy goodness to be had yes. moving across these zones and through these spaces. It feels so cool to burst out of a really tight area and into a, just a huge drop like oh, that. I it does. It's so exhilarating. Now this blobby map that I've got up here was an early attempt during development of our zone flow to try to figure out how we would stack these zones together and achieve the relationship between their geography and geometry that made sense and felt great to traverse. We ended up with something slightly different than this, but this is pretty representative to explain what the world builders were thinking about when they planned these mm -hmm. spaces out. I like that. It was really important to our design that while three of the four zones are technically underground, they didn't feel that way, and that they were distinctly different from one another. We pursued that goal by introducing the natural cenotes in the ringing deeps and leaning into the fantasy of the classic underground foundry and industrial workspaces. So even in the zone that felt the tightest, there's places that look as though they're actually on the surface. And within Holofall, we created a massive hollow space in a cavern so vast it feels like an exterior. Oh, I'm so excited! I'm just I'm dying. Sun in the form I'm literally of a dying right now. Crystal. And in Ashkahet, we leaned hard into traditional Nerubian architecture with hanging nests and huge palaces built all over a decaying city that just falls away into the depths. That's cool. And that is the last bit of eye candy Wait, I have more. for you today. Wait, I hope you any enjoyed more. this right. week at what we've got right. in Come development. Back. Right. Yes! This is going to be amazing! So now it's time for me to introduce you to Morgan Day, who's going to give you lots of yes. information about yes. dungeons, raids, and systems. Enjoy. Thanks very much. Bye. Yes!
for reference, the one that announced all classes for all races in the past was Morgan Day. Hello, so. BlizzCon. Oh, sweet. Yeah. My name is Morgan Day, and I'm here to talk to you about some of the upcoming content, features, and systems in The War Within. I'm sure I'll also make some funny faces that I'll regret later in thumbnails, but whatever. <laughs> First up, let's talk about dungeons. There will be eight... Oh! There will be eight new dungeons coming in The War Within, four during level up, one in each of the four zones that Maria just walked us through. Nice. As well as four at max level. Old city. There's a lot of really cool, cool stuff happening in these dungeons. For instance, we have like a kobold dungeon where you'll meet that candle king, where there's like a light mechanic that takes place. You have mm. to kind of keep it going to, to light your way. Uh, there's a dragon riding dungeon, of course. Uh, but also, one of my favorites is the Cinderbrew Meadery <laughs> that Maria just talked us oh, through. Oh, look at them. So They're this so is a dungeon cute. that takes place on I our first it. zone, the Isle of Dorne, uh, which is where you'll experience you know, all of our earthen buddies. And this is the place it. where they make that cinder brew mead that she was talking about. You know, they're taking all that honey that they gather from throughout the zone to make the mead to do all it's kinds of fun and more nefarious things with. It's a little jarring to see a 2D art next to 3D uh, models. Although I do have to say, <laughs> yeah, I feel right? like they're a little bit behind the times. I feel like all the kids are drinking that you know, hard seltzer or something these days, but whatever. <laughs> they're old school, I get it. Next up, our raid, the Nerubar Palace. So this is an Ooh. eight boss raid that will take place in the zone of Aj Kahet. Uh, and this is really the culmination oh, of all of so those pretty. machinations it, it looks so pretty. About, yes. that we see play out between the Nerubian Empire, their queen, and her collaboration with Zalatath. So for this next one, uh, we don't normally show things this early, but I thought it'd be cool to share. Uh, on the left there, you can kind of see the top-down view of the raid. And on the right, it's more of like a side cutout. Uh, so we like to work on all of our dungeons and raids when they still look like this, as it's much easier to iterate uh, while we're in 2D than it is to kind of change the zones around once we're in the game and it's all blocked out. Uh, so to step us through the raid really quickly, uh, after barging through the front door, uh, you'll very quickly fall and or get knocked into one of those giant pits of that black blood of the old god that you'll hear much more about in Ajkahet. Uh, and then you'll batter your way through the harvest pits, and then finally traverse your way back up through the stalactite wing, which is not a final name, I promise, uh, <laughs> until you finally f fight your way into the queen's inner sanctum, where you'll come face to face with her as the end boss. Um, so as you can see, this will kind of feel like a winged raid in terms of the vibes, but in, in terms amazing. of the player experience, Ooh. it'll actually be quite a bit more linear than what you might be used to for a raid I like that. I like that a lot. Vibes. I do too. Uh, so something that I also think is fun Harvest to talk bits. about really quick is um, <laughs> with all of our dungeons and raids, we like to try to explore like what is this, the thing that's going to make this space feel really unique, that's going to make it stand out from all the other times that we've built in these dungeons and raids. And with this space, we really thought that, you know, given that we have the Nerubian to play with, they've got all these amazing, like, webs and th silken threads that you can kind of traverse uh, the zone through, we thought it'd be really fun to explore verticality as a major element of this raid. Mm. Uh, so I I'm think so excited. Really fun to see what Anka the, the Old Kingdom is that. my absolute favorite dungeon in Next the entire up, World of Warcraft. Let's talk about <laughs> systems. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be great. Yeah, give us some systems. That's what makes or breaks a game. So I want to walk you through some of our features and systems at a really high level. But first, I want to talk about some of the philosophies that are really guiding us to add these into the war within. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, you know, we really want to continue to extend the philosophies of Dragonflight into the war within. And really, when we talk about that, there's three main pillars that I want to touch on. First, we really want to make sure that we're focusing on evergreen features. We want to make sure that we're making World of Warcraft better forever and not focusing on things that we know we're going to have to leave behind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I've been saying this for years. Thank you. That's an applause. That evergreen. Applause. Evergreen. Next, uh, we want to make sure that there's something for everyone. So whether you're a hardcore raider, a PvPer, a collector, or apparently like Holly, you just love to play tons of alts and run around the world exploring things. Thank you. Uh, we want to make sure that there's something in War Within that you can really geek out over and that resonates with you. I'm already geeking, don't worry. And finally, <laughs> we want to make sure that we're continuing to build on our philosophy and build on our systems and content with people who play multiple characters in mind. We want to make you. sure. Woo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ah. We want to make sure that we're building all of our systems to really respect the time of the player behind the keyboard and not focusing so much on the accomplishments of that individual character. Thank you. Thank you. 
So let's talk about Delves. Uh, Delves are a new feature that will be integrated into the outdoor world experience, where the fantasy of these is actually that you'll be joining the Dragon Scale expedition in their search for lost treasures all across Kazogar. Nice, Kazogar's. glad to see them coming back. I like so them. So Delves are an evergreen feature Ooh, that is really fun. integrated into the outdoor world experience. Cool. We want Delves to be a new pillar of end game content for those outdoor world explorers. Sweet. Uh, we really view this as something like when we added World Quest back in Legion, mm -hmm. uh, where they are gonna be really integrated Stable. and transformative into that outdoor world, especially that end game loop. Cool. Um, so one of the main reasons I'm stoked about Delves is that these will provide an opportunity for us to you know, give seasonal content and rewards to those outdoor world explorers. So that nice. means things like you know, rewards that you're used to, like mounts, achievements, titles, but we'll also be adding a outdoor Ooh. row to the Great Vault with War Within. Oh, I requested that. They have been listening. Uh, ah, it took the back So that all years. of you outdoor world explorers will be able <laughs> to share oh, no. and enjoy of you know rushing to the Great Vault every week to collect your loot. Uh, and there will also be 13 unique delves that we'll be launching War Within with. Nice. Uh, and delves will scale launch. from one to five that players. Is. And be like one to five. Silver. So that means if you want to play a delve solo, yes. one that's to totally cool. If you e, want to go with you and, you and your partner, Bitch. that works e. as well. Can, or you can bring your whole dungeon group in. And <laughs> we are going to delve will scale yes. based on your group size and your roles. I'd be screaming. You people need to and scream. I would be remiss if I didn't mention <laughs> one of my favorite features of Dells, which I think Maria alluded to earlier, which is that there will be an NPC companion joining you on all of your adventures. So, no. for season one, no, that'll be I hate Bond those. Beard, no, as you can see. no, no, I don't want NPCs to follow and me around. Brand will be tagging along Please with tell you me it's off. Oh, on it's all of your Dells Dear adventures, heavens. and will totally never, not even once, aggro a pack of monsters that you didn't want them to. Mm -hmm. Thank I you. I have my fingers crossed behind my back right now. Uh, so, <laughs> Brandon will have a custom. <laughs> Brandon will have a customizable uh, talents and mechanics and abilities uh, that you'll be able to kind of load out to suit your playstyle and needs. So, you know, maybe you need a little bit of extra healing. Uh, well, you can load Bran out to provide that for you. And finally, um, you you know wouldn't be exploring with the Dragon Scale Expedition if at the end of every delve there wasn't this massive treasure trove that we need Bran to open for us, which hopefully brought a couple of keys to open some of the chests in there. Uh, but before Bran can open that treasure, that vault for you, you'll need to maybe defeat a, a boss, maybe you'll solve a couple puzzles, something like that, and then Bran will be able to open that vault door for you. Sweet. So kind of taking a page out of the digs. I do like the digs. Next up, let's talk about Warbands. Ah, it's happening! Ah! I hope you're still there, Silver. So Warbands are a system that we're introducing that will really be the representation of all of your characters across your Battle.net account. Uh, you know, Warbands are an opportunity for us Rip. to create a platform where you can share your achievements, resources, and all that other good stuff across all of those characters. So the goal of this system is really to be that representation of the philosophy shift that I mentioned earlier about I'm back. really respecting I'm sorry. the time the behind time. the keyboard yeah, and not those individual characters. Um, there's actually a ton of additions and modifications. We've talked about a few here. Um, there's no like singular UI screen that says warbands. What a miss. Uh, it's more of this like right all these modifications and updates and, and features are like kind of wearing a big coat that says warbands on the back of it. It's, it's how I kind of keep it head in my, or straight in my head. Uh, but just to talk about a couple of those cool features, um, we'll actually be revisiting the um, transmog rules of how you acquire those, those appearances in The War Within. So for all of you who have... <laughs> so that means all of you who have probably had to run four characters through all of those legacy instances just to make sure you're collecting all the appearances, uh, that won't be the case anymore in War Within. You'll just be able to run it with one character. Nice. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Uh, and oh yeah, uh, Hello. Holly mentioned this already, but this is obviously one that people are looking forward to. Uh, all of our reputations as well as renown in the War Within will be shared across. Finally. Your account. Thank you. Now, can we do that with please. the old stuff too, please? That'd be great. Yes, please. Please. Thank you. 
Uh, last but not least, let's talk about Hero Talons. Uh, so here's a quick mock-up of what the UI will look like that I think really helps explain how these integrate into our current talent trees. Uh, but really quick, let's take a look at how this will work. So there will be three new ta uh, Hero Talent trees per class, and two will be available per specialization that you can freely choose and swap between. Uh, and also, this is another evergreen feature. This is a system that we think is gonna provide a new vector of choice and customization for you Ooh. and all of your classes, as well so. as create opportunities for us to really dig into Let some of those core class fantasies right? that are you know, so amazing. Yes, please. So here, Talents will introduce these new, small, self-contained talent trees like you just saw in the UI. And the way I like to think about it is like, currently we have two types of talent points, right? We have class talent points and specialization talent points. And now in the War Within, there'll be a third type called hero talent points. So let's look at a quick example, which hopefully explains it a little bit more. This is a warrior, as you can see. These are the three hero talent Ooh. trees that they'll have available, Mountain Thane, Colossus, and Slayer. Mm -hmm. And as you can see in the top left, we have Protection, who will be able to choose between Mountain Thane and Colossus. Mm. Up on the right, you'll see Fury. Yep, that's right. Mountain Thane and Slayer are their options. And down at the bottom, Colossus and Slayer are their options. That's cool. So this is how the majority of our classes are gonna look in like the that. War Within. The exception, of course, being <laughs> Druids and Demon Hunters, who are a bit special. Make them so less special. Those will look a little different. So let's take a look at how you'll unlock the system, as well as how it'll, it'll feel playing through as you're leveling through the War Within. Uh, so the system will automatically unlock at, at level 71, and it'll just kind of appear in your UI. Cool. You'll earn one talent point per level as you level from 71 to 80. And there are 10 talent points in total with several choice nodes along the way. So I like to think of this as being similar to like the Legion artifact, where as you were leveling and progressing, you were making some choices along the way, but ultimately you're gonna unlock the whole tree. Nice. Uh, and also I wanna be very clear here, these are uh, extremely low friction to swap between those choice nodes, as well as to swap between the different hero talent trees. Yes. Good. So, you know, this should be very analogous to your Agreed, current trash trees, panda. and will follow Agreed, all the same it. rules that you used to there. So, you know, at the start of a raid boss, you know, before a Mythic Plus starts, before an arena match <clears throat> kicks off, and anywhere in between. And to wrap us up, I wanted to show off a really quick video of what hero talents look like in action. Nice. So this is a warrior, as you can see, popping avatar, jumping in. And this next one is that same warrior with the Mountain Thane talent tree. As you can see, Stormbolt hits multiple oh. targets. There's a couple of cool new oh. V effects and a lot of other It's like cool we were talking about class well. skins. I heard some oohs. That's exciting. <laughs> That's really exciting. Our That's exciting. Happy. Blood Mage. So Blood Mage. That about wraps Blood Mage. Up Blood Mage. Blood, Blood Mage. Blood Blage. Void Paladin. Void it in. I need Blage and Void it in, please. Yes. Yes, please. We hope you really liked what you saw here. And if you'd uh -huh. like to know more, uh -huh. please join us tomorrow at the Deep Dive Excellent. panel where at noon, where Ian will walk you through some of what you saw today in more detail. Nice. Woo, Ian! As well as a bunch of other cool new stuff in the War Within. So thank Very you all so cool. much. I hope you have a great BlizzCon. Bye. Nice. I'm a little sad it's over. I know. Bring them back. I need more. I need more. <laughs> is that the whole is that the whole what's next for WoW section? Or is there more for it? Yeah, I guess that's it. BlizzCon 2020. Right. Yeah, that was it. What cool. Like to thank our partners. Did you know I stream on Twitch now? I do everything from transmog to leveling to gold making, and I'm live five days a week to chat with. So come hang out. And there we have it. If you think I've missed information or you want to request I do a specific guide, let me know in the comments below. Even if I don't answer you, I just might add your idea to my list. As always, thank you so much for watching, and remember, it's never too latte.